What's up guys? Welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Today we're going to be unboxing these two brand new 2024 starter sets. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing for these. We're going to take a look at all the figures and everything else it comes with and check it out and see which one of these is better. If you guys are having a tough choice choosing between just one of them, you know, maybe they're kind of expensive, like 40 bucks a piece, and maybe you can't afford both. I'm going to break it down for you and uh, give you my recommendations. If you can only choose just one, which one it should be. And if you guys are new and just getting into hero clicks make sure you hit that subscribe button because i am going to be doing a lot of how to play content with these two new starter sets to help teach you guys how to play hero clicks from the ground up but without further ado let's get to the unboxing all right we're going to start things off with this beautiful marvel 2024 starter set uh, so you can see here on the packaging you will get iron man spider-man captain marvel and black panther and uh yeah pretty cool you got all the basic stuff you need here to start playing the game you got a map all the character cards dice and each character will come with two cards to uh you know one advanced version one basic version to help you get started and then if you like the character you can kind of play the more advanced version so let's crack this thing open and take a look all right opening that up we have all that stuff here in the plastic Ooh. Very pretty, <laughs> very, very nicely packaged with all the bubble wrap and everything. Um, all right, so here we go. Oh man, these sculpts are amazing. I will say the sculpts for all these sets are just so beautiful. Uh, I really just had to get these for the sculpts. Like uh, being a more advanced player myself, I didn't really need these, but you know, I can't help myself. They just look so cool. And we'll just take a quick look at them because they are just so nice looking. Uh, here's that Spider-Man. He's like sitting on top of the Empire State Building or something. Uh, just taking a spider selfie, and it just looks freaking great. The suit's really cool, too, on this one. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I know that's not like the regular Spider-Man suit. I don't know exactly where that came from, but it's very nice. And then moving right along here to Iron Man, one of my favorite heroes of all time in this beautiful metallic red and gold paint job here and just such a great sculpt on this guy i love the the flying pose with the smoke and everything looks great next up here we have black panther who is just doing a cool you know throwing action pose here throwing some vibranium daggers so that's pretty awesome i also love the attention to detail you know on the bases of these like he's actually you know in like a like desert or some type of rocky dirt environment there i guess just in wakanda probably uh, but last but not least here we do have our captain marvel doing an epic you know jumping flying punch or blast or something pretty epic pose there so very cool love the sculpts on these like i said 10 out of 10 honestly like i said worth getting just for the sculpts if you're a fan of the characters so uh here we have the whole uh, rule book which uh will take more of an in-depth look at in some of my upcoming how to play videos like i mentioned earlier and but let's open this up and take a look at all the extras that come in here because we will need to take a look at these cards to see what these characters can do as you can see it does come with some dice some very cool all red dice with a spider-man logo very awesome love to see it and that is on the six there let's see if they roll good for us that's a seven i'll take it average odds there uh, but yeah we'll take a look at the cards here next all right and like i said each of these uh, comes with a regular and a advanced version for each character so you do get two character cards so we're going to start off with the basic versions here number 1a we have iron man and he has the avengers team ability that we can see up here and that is going to give him plus one attack against certain characters that you would pick at the beginning of the game that all share a team ability uh, it helps him throughout the game to get you know up his attack value some which is really nice and for this basic card he is 50 points and on his damage power he has perplex and range combat expert so he can perplex up his stats by plus one or somebody else's and also range combat expert will bump up his attack and damage value so he can hit harder which is pretty nice you can also fly uh so that's good and sidestep so he can move around every turn and that five range double target not too bad and then on black panther here we have uh again avengers team ability to up his attack 
He has just leadership and outwit on his special damage power, but charge with a 12 attack and Blades Claws Fang, so he can roll a d6 to deal damage. So even though he only has a three, he could potentially deal five or six if you get a good roll on that. But the leadership and outwit combo is great. You always need leadership on the team to up your action total and outwit to turn off opposing characters' powers is always nice to have as well. Looking at our basic Spider-Man here next, he has uh, the Spider-Man team ability, which will give him plus one to his Super Senses rolls because he already has Super Senses. But then on the back half of his dial here where he doesn't have Super Senses, it'll at least give him Super Senses on a six. So that's not too bad. You got Incapacitate, and when he uses it, if the attack roll is doubles, instead give each hit character two action tokens. So Incapacitate, of course, gives action tokens instead of dealing damage. The potential to give each hit character up to two action tokens is pretty crazy since he has double target already. Uh, so he could potentially hand out four action tokens with one in cap. I would say that's worth, you know, trying to in cap. Uh, normally, a lot of times right now, it's not really worth it, but that definitely could be worth it, especially with hypersonic speed, one of the best move powers in the game to, uh, you know, move around and be able to move, shoot, and then move back again. Very good. Captain Marvel is our last basic card here, has Avengers team ability for that plus one attack. And then her special attack power gives her energy explosion, and when she uses it, the damage dealt is penetrating, which means it can't be reduced. So if they have toughness and vulnerability or impervious, it'll go straight through that. Um, so yeah, not bad. Running shot with a special energy explosion, or even just shooting for four damage is great. That's a big damage value. 18 toughness, not too bad. And, uh, you know, goes up to a 12 attack there with some close combat expert at the back half for dial. So pretty solid for 50 points. You know, nice seven clicks long is always good to see as well. And now let's take a look at how the uh, advanced versions stack up. So this time Iron Man's coming in at 75 points. He's got free move one square, which with the free two square sidestep, you know, gives him three squares of movement every turn. That's great. Uh, which is also cool because you could sidestep up, shoot, and then, you know, move back a square, kind of like a really, really short hypersonic. Uh, but anyway, then you've got the genius billionaire playboy philanthropist special damage power, which still gives him perplex and range combat expert, but also when Iron Man uses perplex to target a friendly character, that character can use energy shield deflection until your next turn. That's not too bad at all. That If he perplexes up his own defense to 18, uh, he would also have energy shield to have another plus two from range attacks, which is great. Um, or even just perplexing up his attack or range or whatever you need uh, is really, really nice to get that energy shield top dial. Uh, otherwise, handing it out to other people is also really nice. I would say if this was the 50 point dial, I would certainly give it a try. Uh, at 75 points nowadays is a bit much, but you know, when you're just learning the game, it's, it's pretty solid. It's a good start for sure. Uh, nothing too crazy. And then we've got Spider-Man here for 75 points this time. He's got traded Leap Climb, and that'll let him move around the map more freely, you know, over elevated and stuff without having to stop. And when an opposing character misses Spider-Man after resolutions, place Spider-Man in a square adjacent to his current square, and successful Super Sense rolls also count as a miss. So yeah, he can dodge attacks with Super Senses, that will count as a miss, he can place himself a square away. It's really nice, because uh, every time your opponent misses, he can keep like moving back and possibly go around a corner or something where they can't see him anymore. So it's really nice to be able to move on your opponent's turn, because that is not something you're normally able to do. Uh, but then I think we'll have to take a look at the back here for that special attack power. And that gives him Incapacitate and Precision Strike. And when he uses Incapacitate, he deals each hit character one damage in addition to giving them an action token. Very good. Uh, you know, giving an action token is cool and all, but being able to deal a damage on top of it is always really great. And so yeah, you know, Hypersonic in there, get a double target in cap to give them both a token and then also deal them one damage. Very nice. Um, again though, for 25 more points, you know, it's not like a huge crazy increase, but it is a nice little bonus there. I kind of actually like the 50 point version of him a little better still because uh, double tokening people with in cap is really strong sometimes. Uh, anyway, then we have the advanced version of Black Panther and he has traded toughness this time and pulse wave as free, but only if Black Panther has been damaged since your last turn. I actually really love that. It really just screams, you know, movie Black Panther to me because uh, he would store up the kinetic energy and then release it with a big, you know, boom, pulse wave, quake type of, of attack. Um, so yeah, he gets to use pulse wave, which is one of the most powerful powers in the game. He just has to get hit first to be able to use it. 
so that is, you know, not as great as it could be, but at least he has traded toughness this time to kind of absorb some of that impact. Uh, and then we'll take a look at the back here for his other special damage power that gives him leadership and outwit still, but also adds uh, that when Black Panther uses outwit, the targeted character modifies their defense minus one until your next turn. That's really great. It's kind of like a perplex in there as well, but uh, just to minus one the defense. Uh, so yeah, outwitting somebody and then minusing their defense makes them very susceptible to an attack from himself or other friendlies. So that's not bad at all. Again, though, you know, not a super huge increase for the extra 25 points. Uh, just kind of some nice little extra bonus there. But then you also have Captain Marvel at the advanced dial says... Uh, when Captain Marvel clears action tokens, heal her one click for each token removed. Not bad. Some built-in healing is always good to help keep you in the fight. And then you have Energy Explosion. When Captain Marvel uses it, she instead deals three damage, and the damage dealt can't be reduced below two. So actually a much better version of the power, because it is essentially the same thing before she had Energy Explosion that dealt penetrating damage, which meant it couldn't be reduced. And Energy Explosion already deals two damage anyway, so uh, the fact that it can't be reduced below two when it deals three damage now is very powerful, because uh, you can actually deal a lot more damage to a group of enemies that doesn't have any damage reducers, but the still retains the fact that it can't be reduced below two. And in fact, that gets through invincible as well, because it's not just penetrating, it just can't be reduced below two, which uh, invincible can reduce penetrating damage, which this wouldn't be able to reduce the damage regardless. So very, very powerful energy explosion effect. And yeah, I actually kind of like, I think of all of them, this is my favorite upgrade for the 75 point line, uh, just because of that and the built-in healing. I think it does give some value to those extra 25 points. So that is the Marvel set, you guys, in a nutshell. But we'll take a quick look here. We also get a rule book, full color rule book, very nice. Like I said, we're gonna probably kind of flip through this some more on some future videos, possibly. Um, but we do also get these two new powers and abilities cards, one for each player, assuming you're playing with two players, what you know, normally you kind of need to, um, but you can play solo, you know, just to kind of learn the game by yourself. It's not too hard. It is a little hard just keeping track of all the characters at once, but you know, at least to just play like one character on each team or something to get the hang of it. Not a bad idea, but yeah, this is just going to show you all of what all the powers and abilities do. And, you know, you, you definitely need this. Trust me, even, even if you're a new player, uh, like the most advanced players still have this sitting right next to them every single game because you cannot memorize all this stuff. You always will need to flip it open and check the, you know, wordings of something to make sure that something is, you know, you're playing the game right, basically. Uh, but then we got uh, a lot of cool, like, tokens here for, you know, smoke and debris and blocking and everything. Uh, we got some cool little civilian tokens and uh, like Hydra tokens and stuff. And we can use these for our action tokens to keep track of our actions every turn. So I'm wondering with all these extra tokens here, if there's some type of uh, like scenario in here, I'll have to go over that later. Um, I'm not gonna read through the whole thing right now, but it'd be cool. I know a lot of the old starter sets had scenarios. Um, so it'd be nice if they included like a little one to help get started or something, but unwrapping this bubble wrap, we can see our map that we get. And wow, it is very well protected in that bubble wrap. You love to see it. All right, so what I think is really interesting about this is they, they designed this more like a puzzle piece now. Um, we did get map tiles in the last few starter sets, um, but they did not have these like interlocking pieces here. It was just flat, so it would always kind of slide around. So it's really nice to see this. This is really cool. It helps lock it all together. And it looks like the opposite side of this map is just completely white blank. Um, it's actually really nice for learning the game because you don't have to worry about all the terrain and stuff and like how that's affecting you at first. So I'd say like for your very first game, just playing on the white, uh, all, the, all the white tiles here just to get, you know, a feel for the moving and counting range and stuff like that. It'd be really good for that. 
uh, but I would definitely move on quickly to get a better idea of how the terrain works because you do want to know that. And like I said, we're going to go over a lot of that in future videos, but it's really cool to see how these fit together like puzzle pieces. Very nice. Uh, so yeah, I might not throw together the whole thing right at this moment, but uh, I really like how these interlock and everything. It's really cool. But yeah, and it just kind of looks like this is like a basic like park map, which is kind of nice. Just saying, you know, got some lamp posts and bushes. There's like a broken fence, you know, some like benches and a little pond or whatever, a little fountain or something. So yeah, not bad. Uh, very nice little map there. All right, but on to the DC Starter Set 2024. Again, just a quick look at the outside of the box here. You can see pretty much has all the same stuff here. Two character cards for each uh, beginner and advanced version. And you've got another map there with the map tiles. And this time we've got Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Harley Quinn. Obviously some of the biggest names in DC right now. So yeah, without further ado, let's crack this one open. All right, so as you can see, opens to look pretty much exactly the same as the Marvel counterpart. And sliding that out there, it is pretty much packaged just the same. And we'll take a quick look here. Again, sculpts on these things, 10 out of 10. Great job, WizKids. Starting us off here, this Superman looking great. Again, love this action jumping Superman punch pose. Very awesome. Um, then we've got wonder woman and she's looking great like she's about to throw her lasso and catch some bad guys very awesome and batman here with his cape epically flowing in the wind about to shoot his grapnel gun and zip line away somewhere uh, very awesome love this sculpt on that batman and then of course last but not least we have harley quinn and she looks like she's just about to blast somebody with this slingshot here that's pretty funny. Got a little backpack and everything. Not bad. So again, four very nice looking sculpts on these figures as well. And again, we have um, all of our bonus stuff here. So let's go right into the cards and see what these figures can do. All right, let's just dump all this stuff out here again. Oh, wow. Uh, I think that's interesting. It looks like the cards weren't actually in their own sealed uh, package like they were with the Marvel ones, which is actually okay, kind of, because uh, I, I cut it out in the video, but the uh, packaging around the Marvel cards was insanely hard to get through. I literally had to get scissors. I could not pull the tape off. I don't know what kind of tape they were using on those. But anyway, let's see how these dice go. And this time looks like we got black and yellow Batman dice very awesome. I actually like these a lot. I might use these, uh, but we'll take a look here. Oh, I don't know. There was only a three. I might not use these. <laughs> All right. But anyway, let's take a look at these cards here. Now I actually arranged them differently this time. We're going to look at them back to back. I feel like that might've been better than the way I did it with the Marvel ones a second ago. Uh, just so you get to see them back to back. So first of all, Superman has the Superman team ability so he can see through hindering terrain, which is always nice. And for his basic card here, he has charge, but don't half speed for 50 points. So he's got a full eight speed movement with his charge. He can run up there and punch somebody with a whopping 12 attack, three damage, close combat expert. Uh, so he's going to actually punch 13 attack for four damage up close. That is really good. <laughs> you love to see it. Uh, I actually really, really like this Superman. It's very good for 50 points, not gonna lie. I would definitely play this myself, even in a regular game. Uh, and I have seen a discrepancy here. Um, I, I don't know if this has been addressed or errated already, but uh, it does show 11 attack here on this Superman, uh, on the advanced version, which I believe is supposed to be a 12. We'll consult the dial real quick, just so we can, uh, you know, get some more info on that. And it is showing 12. So yeah, I would definitely say that the dial is showing 12. One of the cards is showing 12. I think the card, the advanced card showing 11 is the incorrect one there, uh, which is good. You know, you want the 12. The 12 is better for sure. But anyway, he has a new trait here now for the 75 point line that says when Superman knocks back an opposing character, knockback damage, that character is dealt. This action is penetrating. That's really cool. Uh, so when he, whenever he knocks somebody back, he does deal penetrating damage, which is really nice with the quake he gets later because it'll knock everybody back. And then he has charge, but don't have speed still. And when Superman uses it and hits after resolutions, knock back any hit characters. Ooh. So that 75 point version is also really strong. We still get a full eight square charge 
with a 12 attack and a uh, close combat expert to make it 13 for four damage. And then he can knock back an opposing character and that knockback damage will be penetrating on top of it. So very, very powerful. I actually really like the 75 point line version of this Superman as well. Moving right along though, now we have Batman who uh, for the 50 point version basic card here, he just has Smoke Cloud, and when Batman uses it after resolutions, he can move up to his speed value. So it is a power action to use Smoke Cloud to place out Hindering Terrain. And he has regular stealth here. Uh, so he does not have the Batman team ability that would give him stealth. He has the Justice League team ability, which is, you know, very much like the Avengers team ability. It gives you that plus one attack against certain targets that you choose at the beginning of the game. But he does have uh, some outwit, and I guess no defense, but he does have stealth, which makes him, you know, really hard to shoot at at range, uh, impossible for most characters. So that's pretty much his defense top dial is his stealth, and just being able to throw out some smoke cloud and then move through the smoke is pretty cool. It'd be nice if he could, like, make an attack or something after he moved also, but just, you know, moving around in stealth and outwitting stuff is pretty much his job here. Um, yeah, nothing else really there, but that's the Justice League team ability for you. And then here's the 75 point dial that uh, he has traded shape change and perplex, but only to target opposing characters because they are a cowardly and superstitious lot. So you want to perplex them down, you know, lower their attack or defense or whatever you need to. Um, and let's see here what his other special does now. Smoke Cloud as free. And when Batman uses it, if he has no action tokens, after resolutions, you may place him in a square of smoke terrain he generated. So that's much better. This is a huge upgrade over the 50 point line. Smoke Cloud for free and then place him in any one of the smoke terrain markers. Uh, and then, you know, he can outwit and perplex them down. And then he can, you know, take his actual action to make an attack, which is really nice. So 75 point line, not bad at all. Um, and he does have shape change. So that'll give him basically a uh, rollout. They won't be able to target him with an attack if he gets that five or six. So yeah, I really, really like the 75 point version over the 50 for sure. Moving on to Wonder Woman now, she has the Wonder Woman team ability, which much like the Spider-Man team ability will give her plus one to her super sense rolls or at least give it super senses on a six when she doesn't have it normally. Uh, but even just for 50 points, her starting dial here has defend and super senses on her special defense power with flurry and a 12 attack with incapacity. Acetate. Uh, so no moving attack, but once she gets on you, she's hitting you twice, potentially. Uh, and that defend to help bump everybody next to her up to an 18 defense is great. And yeah, you're going to have that super duper senses, so not bad at all. And that is the basic version. For the more advanced version, she will gain a trait that gives her leadership. And when Wonder Woman uses it and succeeds after resolutions, you may heal her or an adjacent friendly character one click. Not bad at all. You know, built-in healing for her or the friendlies is always good. And then you have um, the defend and invulnerability and adjacent friendly characters have this Wonder Woman team ability. So that's really interesting. Um, she loses her own super senses, but gains invulnerability so she can reduce damage. Um, she'll still have super senses on a six from the her team ability, but she gets defend and grants other people her Wonder Woman team ability for super senses on a six. I think that's really great for this set in particular, you know, uh, giving Superman and, and Batman that extra rollout of super senses on a six is really great. Um, defending them up to an 18 and everything. So, and with the leadership, she's really a team player. Um, but I can't help but think that I still like the 50 point version of her a little better because I do love those super duper senses, you know, a four through six roll to not take any damage is great. Um, but I can definitely see the bonus for the 75 point line. So a little bit of a toss up with this one. They're both pretty decent. Then uh, we have the Harley Quinn, last but not least here. Energy explosion, but deals three damage instead of two. So it's kind of similar to what we saw with Captain Marvel. Um, also, she has the team player team ability, so she can copy any of the team abilities on our team. Uh, which is really great. You know, she can copy the Wonder Woman team ability, get plus one to her super senses rolls over here, which is going to make her really hard to hit. Uh, and yeah, she's got running shot, of course, to combo with that energy explosion. So not bad. Three damage instead of two. You know, it's not penetrating, but it can be big damage on a crowd. Uh, so yeah, then you have the advanced version here for 75 points where she adds a trait that gives her poison. And when Harley Quinn uses it, characters she hits this turn are considered adjacent to her. That's really cool. So as long as she doesn't move, 
Uh, she could shoot somebody and then take the free action to use poison. And whenever, you know, whoever she hit that turn, consider it adjacent to her to take a damage from the poison. Very nice. Energy explosion, penetrating psychic blast. So she can either, you know, shoot somebody with penetrating blast for three damage, or it'll make the energy explosion penetrating as well. Again, much like the Captain Marvel for the Marvel set. Uh, so I don't know. I kind of like the three damage version better, but having penetrating blast and energy explosion is a great combo and it does give you good choices. Um, and if you get a big energy explosion off, then you can poison the whole lot of them, which is really cool. So I guess it kind of is a three damage, uh, energy explosion in that regard. Um, again, I actually like both of these versions of Harley Quinn. They're both really solid. I think they both kind of bring something different to the table. So that is pretty much it for the DC side of things. Uh, we'll just take a quick look here. We do have more tokens, blocking, hindering water, it looks like even. Uh, and again, we get some uh, cool little bystander tokens here. We actually get a dark side with a 12 attack penetrating blast for four damage. What the heck? <laughs> I guess it gives them something cool to fight against. Um, I, there must be, I'm going to have to look through these some more here in a minute because there has got to be a some type of uh, scenario you can play with these or something. But yeah, you can see here we do get just another full color, you know, rules booklet here. Very nice. Um, I'm not really seeing anything as far as what to use those bystanders for. Maybe for this little setup here for a test game. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'll, I'll read the whole thing through later myself, and we'll probably do a video about that. Um, but yeah, then we also get two Powers and Abilities cards for the DC version. And again, it's just going to be that handy-dandy little booklet that has all the things you need to know about all the Powers and Abilities. Uh, so that's very nice. And then again, we have a very heavily bubble-wrapped set of map tiles here. Okay, so we can see here, I think it is a different map for the DC set. It looks more like a city street. And there's some water running through there. Um, so that's interesting. So yeah, um, I heard a rumor that these will stick together. And I'm going to test that out real quick and see. Um, because, you know, this map and the Marvel map are both like half the size of a standard map. So it's rumored that these fit together. I want to test that out real quick. All right, so I put the maps together uh, like they're supposed to be. This is the Marvel one right here, so you can kind of see the full thing more or less. Um, I actually don't believe these are technically made to go together uh, because once you take this off, let's lift that up, you can kind of see there is the DC set under there. And I will say there's not really anything saying like you couldn't put these together to make a full size map. Uh, but it doesn't look to me like that it was really designed that way. Yeah, you could definitely make it work if you wanted to. Nothing wrong with that. But these are definitely like two different half size maps. So I don't think officially they go together, but I could be wrong. Like I said, you can stick them together. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. If you want to do that for fun to make a bigger map, definitely go for it. But unfortunately, that means that these wouldn't be allowed legally in like a competitive tournament. So uh, these would really just be for home games, for learning how to play and that kind of stuff. I think they look great for that but just note that uh, you know you wouldn't be able to like take this to a local game most likely to play competitively so that is kind of a downside you know if you want to get out there and play competitively but regardless uh, for just learning the game for the starter set it serves its purpose very well and I really like how these interlock it's actually really nice all right so now that all that is out of the way all that said and done we've taken a look at the basic and advanced versions of both the Marvel and DC sets they both come with a pretty similar map they both come with two Two powers and abilities cards for you and a friend. They both come, you know, with a cool rule book and everything. And they both come with two really awesome pairs of dice with the Batman and Spider-Man symbols on them. So, you know, really nice uh, sets overall. But like I said at the beginning of this video, if you can only choose one of these, which one are you going to go with? In my opinion, honestly, it really, first of all, just comes down to your own personal preference of characters. Are you a Marvel fanboy? Are you a DC fanboy or fangirl, whatever? Uh, what are you into? You know, that is above all the most important thing. What are you gonna have the most fun with? Are you gonna have the most fun with, you know, having Iron Man blast people and Spider-Man swinging around doing stuff? Or are you gonna have the most fun having Superman knock somebody out and Batman stealth around and do cool stuff? So it really just comes down to that first and foremost. But besides that, in my personal opinion, uh, although I am a much bigger fan of Marvel, Iron Man and Spider-Man especially, 
Um, you know, this DC set, I think, is just way better as far as the actual dials go. The Superman is great at both the 50 and 75 point line. Batman, better at 75 than 50. Wonder Woman, pretty good at both 50 and 75. Harley Quinn, also pretty good at both 50 and 75. I think you get a much more well-rounded team either way out of this set versus the Marvel set. I will say with the Marvel set, I think Captain Marvel is pretty good at both point values. I think Iron Man is okay. Honestly, a little bit of a letdown because I'm such a huge Iron Man fanboy and this sculpt is amazing. I was really hoping it would be like top tier. But unfortunately, his 75 point line, although better, is still just not quite worth the 75 points. If that was the 50 point line, I would definitely play it. And the 50 point line, it doesn't really do much either. It's not super amazing or anything. Um, not that it has to be. Again, these are all dials for just learning the game. But you know, once you get to the more advanced levels of play after that, you know, you want some cool figures still to be able to play with. Uh, the Spider-Man dial, I kind of prefer him more at 50 than at 75, although 75 is pretty good too. I'd say they're both pretty good. And then for the Black Panther, again, both of the dials are okay, uh, but neither of them are like super amazing. Um, they all just kind of have some fun stuff going on, which is great for a starter set to learn how to play. But uh, as far as which one is the best, I'm definitely giving it to the DC set this time. Just all around, I would literally play any one of these dials, except maybe the 50 point Batman is the only one I'm not you know, super psyched about. The rest of them, I think I would play at either point value in a regular game. Um, for these ones, you know, I might play the Captain Marvel, um, but aside from that, you know, maybe the Spider-Man, but I'm probably not gonna play any of them as much as I would wanna play these DC characters. So that is my final judgment, fi my final opinion on this. Uh, I do think the DC set is better. If you have to choose just one to buy and play, the DC set is more well-rounded. However, like I said, if you're if you just really like Marvel characters, there's nothing wrong with getting the Marvel set. Uh, I would definitely get it. Like I got this just because I'm a fan of Iron Man, Spider-Man, and you know all of them. They're really cool, really great sculpts. I just want to add them to my collection. So nothing wrong with getting them for that kind of reason either. But that is all I had to say on this, you guys. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions about these sets in the comments below. And if you are a new player with any questions, make sure to drop them below. I will do my best to help you guys out. But but uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. But if you'd like to help support the channel even more, you can check the links in the description for our Patreon or hit that join button down there for the YouTube memberships. Either way, for as little as $1 a month, you get entered into monthly giveaways and you get to say your name here on the credits with all these other amazing people. So make sure to check that out if that interests you. But that's going to do it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.